I read 117 books on money. These 17 will make you rich. Some of you know I left social literally two, three years ago at this point and stopped posting frequently. However, I am coming back and I decided rather than trying to create incredible, incredible, well-produced content, I like to find the path of least resistance. So what I'm gonna be doing is reacting and giving my points on just these random videos I find on YouTube, TikTok, wherever it is. If you enjoy this, subscribe, smash the like, and let's get into it. I have read hundreds of books on everything from investing to corporate structure to the psychology of- So really quickly, 48 Laws of Power is one of my top books, top favorite books ever. That principle is by Ray Dalio. Dondo Investor is also really good, but let's just- Persuasion. And here's the truth. 95% of what they tell you is completely useless when it comes to actually getting rich. So let me go ahead and save you the thousands of hours I have spent reading that never actually benefited me when it comes to making money. Now listen, do not get me wrong. The books I read were wonderful in their own right. They were fascinating, but they didn't help me get rich. Honestly, you have no time to waste. So these are the 17 books that will actually make you rich. I'm so excited with these 17. The first thing that you really need to understand is that the type of books you're gonna read to go from zero to $10,000 a month will be very different to those that you're gonna read in order to hit 100,000. 100% correct. So before he even goes into it, I'm gonna tell everybody what I think straight away is like 18, a lot of you already know my story, 18 years old, made literally my first million dollars. I even posted all the time too, because it was 17 to 18 years old, I was able to hit that. And then it's only grown from there. But here's the thing, what I read back then to what I read now is completely different. So let's see. A dollar a month or even make a million dollars a month. So therefore I actually divided these 17 books into three categories, going from zero to $10,000 a month, 10,000 to $100,000 a month, and $100,000 to a million dollars a month. Then I actually threw in a bonus category, which is the books that will help you grow from a million dollars a month to $10 million a month and beyond. And honestly, I would say that that is probably the most interesting one. And that's because at that level, macroeconomics actually become the most important thing. That's really when you start to study how the I agree. World actually works. You get into books like The House of Morgan, which explains the truth behind the banking system, but we're gonna get to that a little later in the video. Now, the first book on this list almost sets the foundation for everything to come. And by the way, it's also the only fictional work on this list. Interesting. And I'm talking about The Alchemist. Okay. Now, this book tackles the very prerequisite of making money and getting. I actually have never read The rich, And that's having the guts to actually follow your purpose. Because make no mistake about it, it is far easier to never take that leap of faith or to never start that business. So before you can even think about making money, you need to have a very honest conversation with yourself. And you need to decide if you're willing to take that bet on yourself and decide if you are willing to overcome the these books are important. Like I believe Think and Grow Rich, that was the first book I ever read. It makes it made you visualize or made me visualize. Um, it made me think a different obstacles way. Obstacles that come with following your purpose. Because when you're starting from zero and you wanna get to $10,000 per month, that is probably the hardest income. It is. Going from nothing to something is a lot harder than taking something that's already pretty existing and being able to keep on rolling, like snowballing it, if you will. He's absolutely correct. Threshold. Also, one thing, I don't know if he touches on this or not, but I would just quickly want to interject here, is that the the hardest thing isn't necessarily zero to 10,000, it's actually how you think, because you have to mold your entire thought process, your entire world of what you know, and you have to mold it a certain way, and the money is gradual. So as you start to think differently and perceive and understand the world differently, obviously the money comes with that if you're focused on making money. So it's really important that it's not necessarily the book that helps. Yes, the book helps you think a certain way. However, it's really important that people understand that it's the process of getting yourself to think that way and being disciplined to stick with that. It's not just like woo woo. That is super, super important. And that's why I believe the hardest step is the like the groundwork, the, the foundation and what he's explaining here. To reach. And the reason behind that is because everything is working against you. You see, when you're first starting out, you actually need to rewire your entire brain. 
It, it, exactly what I kind of just went into. You don't need to simply make money, but you need to become the person that's worthy of making money. So when I say that everything is working against you, what I mean by that is that the person you once were is at odds with the person that you're becoming. So I have this saying, this is so important. It's something that I even struggle with till this day. It's who I was, who I am, and who I want to be are all different people. So the paradox here is being able to constantly keep evolving, reflecting, understanding where you are and how to go forward. And just like Newton's first law of motion, you're fighting inertia. And in some sense, zero to $10,000 a month boils down to one thing, mindset. You could have, could have scripted this for you, buddy. You need to adopt that mindset that success is not just a desire, it's a necessity. And that is exactly the lesson of the next book on the list, Thinking. Wow, I did not pre-watch this. It's actually kind of uh, interesting. Thinking Grow Rich is my favorite book when I first started Grow as well. Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And much like the title of the book suggests, it boils down to the idea that if you're able to conceive it and believe it, then you will achieve it. Well then, you can achieve it. Wow. And I'd say that's really the first step towards. He's right. When people do not believe in you, when I first got started, it wasn't like I had everybody cheering me on. You're not supposed to have everybody cheering you on. It's the whole point of going into the unknown, the abyss. What you have to do is learn to cheer yourself on when nobody else is there. Then when everybody else is cheering you on, it just becomes noise to block out and you keep growing. It's the best way for me to explain this becoming rich, actually believing that you can and realizing that it's the only path forward. You see, the book also talks about another pitfall I see far too often in people just getting started. You see, often when you're getting started, you'll get stuck waiting, waiting for the perfect moment, waiting for the perfect business model, just waiting for everything. So I want to give you just an insight on this. Ready? I personally still have no idea what the hell I'm doing when it comes down to progressing as we go. Everything I learn, it's because I don't know. And what I do learn, I pretty much cycle it into, this is useful, this is not useful. Why is it useful? Because it allows X, Y, and Z outcome. So he, he's absolutely- uh, Everything in order to not get started. And the truth- Yeah, so he's absolutely right. And I don't want to say he doesn't either, but really anybody, when you go extremely high levels, they're learning as they go. And that's why you'll see individuals all the time that are like, we well, have no idea what we're doing. We're just doing it because they're actually doing something. The truth is, as obvious as it seems, is that there's no perfect time. There never was and there never will be. The beginning of any journey, let alone the journey of getting rich, is going to be messy. And my friend, that's simply the name of the game. And honestly, being able to navigate through that mess is what will make you successful. And here's where we get to the next book. The next book, Atomic Habits by- Okay, Atomic Habits. Um, very good message. It just bored the hell out of me. It's, it wasn't my cup of tea. Good book though. By James Clear teaches you how to do exactly that. You see, we already established that you need to become a person worthy of success. So I'm gonna 1.5 this speed real quick. Uh, you man, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not gonna hurt your well, attention. Well, you are the sum of- It will hurt your attention. I'm just me single-handedly won't. Of all of your actions. So to change yourself, you need to change your actions. And obviously you can't just reinvent yourself overnight. So you need to do it in incremental steps by implementing new habits, killing old ones and keeping the worthy ones. And that's exactly what Atomic Habits teaches you to do. I remember when I read it for the- It's hard training neural pathways. It, it's, believe me, it's super hard taking a habit that you have already, a preconceived notion of what you do on a day-to-day -day or whatever it is, right? Where you do it subconsciously and then bringing it to front of brain to re to retrain yourself essentially. It is one of the hardest things to do. The first time it completely changed how I approached my work and allowed me to stack all of my good habits. Day by day, I kept solidifying my habits until they eventually became second nature. So here's here's the thing that Atomic Habits doesn't really uh, go into in depth that I learned over time is that habitually we all do things uh, for to, to get a reward or to move away from pain. So typically everything we do is to release dopamine in our brains. So if you're working for three hours, let's say, and then you take a 30 minute break, that 30 minute break, if you eat like some candy or something, it releases dopamine, the sugar hits, um, just eating in general. So it, it's essentially a, a, a reward mechanism. But again, this is how habits can actually be created 
or essentially learned in order to break another habit. Again, super simplified, but you get the idea. Now, real quick, before I get to the next book, I know a lot of you guys are watching this and going, this is amazing, but none of these books are gonna show me what online business do I start this year that will actually get me rich? Because as I said, these are 17 of my favorite books out of hundreds that I've read, but these books aren't gonna tell you, hey, this year, this model's working, this model's not working. Maybe you should try this based on your personality type. So that's why I'm gonna leave a link to my most popular YouTube video down below. This video has helped millions. I'll link it also, whatever he puts, just, uh, you know, guys, go check that out. People decide what business model is the right one for them and which ones they should start today because it is working the best. So once you finish that video, I will leave a link in the description. Go ahead, check out that YouTube video, pick the right business model for you. And let's get back to the video. Now, once you've built a solid base of habits and perhaps you've already chosen your business model and you're starting to make some cash, you need to start setting expectations. And what I mean by this is you need to really begin to understand how to think about money. And that is exactly what you're gonna learn in Money Master of the Game. Oh my gosh, I remember when this came out. Wow. Yeah, um, I it, it's great foundationally, but uh, it, it, it goes into enough to get you wondering, but it, that's just it. It's just enough. It's not going to give you the intricate nitty gritty uh, details when it comes down to taxes and mainly where to allocate your money. It, it, he'll tell you, hey, this is good. This is good. It, play, it plays it very safe, um, which again, I wasn't a big fan of because when you're young, and let's just say I were to fail at 20 years old. If I were to fail and lose everything that I've built, guess what? I restarted my parents' basement where I started. So when it comes down to it, um, Money Master the Game is great to have a firm understanding of security and longevity when it comes down to investments. But again, this is... Uh, this is completely, this is definitely for, for an older crowd, but it's a great foundation to start off. By Tony Robbins. You know, it's funny, I distinctly remember being 17 years old, reading this book and doing one of- Me too, I remember when it came out. It was such a hype book. I think I was 17, all, yeah, I was 17. Uh, so. The exercises where you have to design your life in three ways. In the first scenario, you're just scraping by and you write down how much money you need in order to make that happen from your passive investments. In the second scenario, you're living comfortable, but not extravagantly. And once again, you need to calculate how much of a nest egg you need in order for that to happen. And in the final scenario, you calculate how much money you need to go all out. And what you'll come to realize is that if you're being honest with yourself, success is a lot closer than you may think. And it's funny, I even went through this exercise as a 17 year old, and I'm sure we all think we're like, oh, I need to make $10 million a year to live my dream lifestyle. And I looked at it and after I had written everything down, my dream lifestyle was like $70,000 a month. And the funny thing is the next year when I was 18 years old, I was making that amount of money every single month. So I guess it's- All right, so this is actually a deeper lesson that I don't even think he realized what he said here. He wrote it down. So it, before I even bought my Lambo when I when I had it then, right? I had it on a vision board. Everything I ever had, I put on the vision board when, when that book came out. Um, around the time that book came out because I was re reading Thinking Grow Rich as well. So I don't think he realizes is that he's like, well, I achieved that much. Well, no doubt because you wrote it down. It trained your subconscious already to formulate a plan because everything is top layer brain and then subconscious. So everything that comes to top you know, level brain, what, what you do, like if I were to throw a water bottle or a rock at you right now, your reaction, whatever that is, is already decided in your subconscious. It just formulates to the conscious mind. So it sounds wishy-washy. I promise it's not. Believe me, you, it is it is extremely powerful once you understand what he just said. He's like, oh, I wrote it down and then I made it. Well, yeah, of course, because you wrote it down. You, you already told your brain, I need to make this in order for this to happen. So that's why I, I tell people, aim past the moon. Aim you know, for the stars, right? Because if you miss and land on the moon, you're still at the goal that you want it to be at. It's just crazy how writing things down physically works. And it's funny, I still have those journals in my house to this day. But anyways, back to my point. I think for me, it was very powerful because in my mind, as I said, I thought like for my dream lifestyle, I have to make millions and millions of dollars a year. And listen, $70,000 a month, I understand it's still a, a good chunk of money. It was still substantially less than what I thought I did. So when I wrote everything down, I was like, oh wow, for me to live my dream lifestyle, it's a lot closer than I thought. Now listen, of course, your expectations will always change. And as you become more successful, you might want more from life. But it's just a very powerful exercise to get you you will always want more from life and that can become a pitfall. To quantify what success actually looks like financially, because how can you start working towards success if you don't even know what it means when it comes to cents or dollars? So once you've set your expectations, I think, I think what he also, I, I know Iman is very oriented around, you know, the, the money aspect, which is essentially where everybody is also like success equates to money. But here's the thing. If you guys look at, if you look at him versus everybody else, there's a reason why his growth is beyond everybody. It's because of the fact that he is disciplined. You can even tell with his physique as well. I mean, it's not like I'm in shape, right? He's he's like in shape. He's so disciplined over time as well, compounded. It's physically impossible he would have ever lost. So keep keep that in mind as you listen to this. You as need well. to start executing. And executing, by the way, means how do I make that money actively? You know, in the same way that a year later I was actively earning what was my dream lifestyle, you know, my future dream lifestyle I'd written 18 months before, or, you know, a year before. And what's even more powerful is that if you're 
passive income gets to the point where, where it pays for that lifestyle for the rest of your life. And when I mean by passive, I mean the income from your investments, not some business that is passive because these things can always shrink and, you know, and businesses get stale in the sound. It, it, this is very interesting because he's talking from a point now because it progressed. Obviously, he's talking about this when it progresses. Like I made this much, now I made this much, and now. So again, keep this in mind is you could see how fast the progression is where the mindset has also shifted. So important. A lot of people always think, well, I'm going to buy real estate. Well, buddy, let me tell you something. You should probably, you know, make enough money in order to go ahead and put the whatever percentage it is on that piece of property. So how do you get there, right? That's the equation nobody actually goes ahead and really ponders on. I'm talking about your safe investments to grow year on year. And what was crazy for me was that three years later, after I had done that from an active perspective, I built up a big enough nest egg where I made that every single year just for my investments. So that's really all to say that this stuff is powerful and this stuff works. Now, the next set of books I want to talk about is going from 10 to $100,000 a month, because once you've nailed down your mindset, Oh, here we go. And you're a work machine. You really enter the next phase of getting rich. Now, instead of working harder, you need to learn how to work smarter or preferably still do both. But that really means that you need to focus on systems. I, I just hope he doesn't say anything like like funnel secrets or, or whatnot. Like, oh, please. Systems that you can leverage. And as a result, the type of books that will get you from ten to $100,000 a month are very, very different. And the four hour work week illustrates this point perfectly in describing the Pareto principle. You see, the Pareto principle, also known as the 80-20 rule, states that 80% of any given output derives from 20%. Agreed. I think that was the key from four. Actually, it was the key from four hour work week. Tim Ferriss uh, really li still lives by that till this day, which again, I'm happy that he nailed this, the 80-20 rule um, yeah. of the input. So in other words, 20% of your clients will make up 80% of your revenue. And the craziest part is that this rule extends far beyond just business. It's pretty much a law of nature. So those of you that know, when we used to do these really big affiliate launches, we would do like three, four, five million. I have friends that would do 20, 30, 40 million in like eight days, right? Here's the thing. There would always be a leaderboard of who sent the most sales. And typically the top three or four individuals would be the ones if, if uh, you know, for example, when I did 100K Blueprint, when I launched it on ClickBank, ClickBank was my number one affiliate because ClickBank promoted uh, my product to their entire network. So we, you know, we did millions of dollars in revenue during that eight day period. And believe it or not, the top three affiliates, you know, uh, ClickBank being one of the top ones is pretty much where 80 to 85% of the revenue of those millions of dollars came from. It's a really important lesson. I'm glad he's- For example, 20% of food causes 80% of weight gain. So regardless of how you frame it, the 80-20 rule allows you to figure out how to work smarter, not harder. Now, the next book we need to talk about is Influence. In the second Influence, Robert Caldini. Okay, listen. When it comes down to these books, these are my favorite, and I want to make it so clear. Uh, even still till this day, this is, this is my Kindle, right? So I read, I'm heavily, heavily, heavily interested in psychological, how people think and why people do things. Th those are my favorite type of books. So influence I would put in even my top five, if you will. Psychology of persuasion. Now, this is one of the highest yes. leverage skills you can have, is the ability to persuade masses of people. And that's really where influence, the so before I was about to create this video, I've been just writing down a bunch of videos that would literally look like this. That's why you have these lights in the background as well. But I said, no, um, one of the keys that I wrote down, one of the biggest factors here is if you had to learn one skill ever that is extremely low friction, and has the highest potential and actually the highest reward is actually understanding why people do things. Psychology is, again, it's very broad. So understanding why people do things and take action will eventually lead you to be able to, I don't know, figure out how to sell anything to anybody based off of understanding what they want. For example, I tell this to some people that ask, why did I buy a Lamborghini? Was it because I like the Lamborghini or I wouldn't have bought the, you know, what it was it? 560, whatever it was, right? I'd buy the 620, 640. Again, that's how much I really don't necessarily even care about the model of it. So why did I get it? Well, did I want to impress somebody? Sure. Who did I want to impress? Maybe women. Why did I want to impress women? Because I wanted to go ahead and obviously get laid. So, you know, I didn't buy it because I loved the car. Of course, the car was, it was, it was great. I bought it because I wanted what the outcome was and understanding why people do things is so, so, so critical. And again, Iman has really nailed this down. Uh, and again, you could see that based off psychology of persuasion. This book truly shines. And I feel like this book is very powerful when you read it right before reading the next one, which is Confessions of an Advertising Man. You see this book paired with David Ogilvy's Confessions of an Notice how he said, this is a segment where it's 10 to 100K. He's absolutely correct. You're not reading an advertising book. You're reading a psychology book. Very big difference. Uh, Influence by Robert Caldini, anything like cash advertising, all of those, they are heavily predicated on, it's just wrapped in a how to advertise, right? 
Read between the lines. It's actually how people react. So let's keep going. Advertising men are pretty much the only marketing books that you will ever need to get rich because they're going to teach you the fundamentals of persuasion, both in marketing and more broadly, as well as the skill of copywriting. So once you know how to market, I was going to say copywriting, but I, I get, yeah, he's right. That's exactly it. Making people do what you want and transmuting that uh, on a screen and having them whip out their credit card and purchase is one of the most sought after skills. Like that's one of the positions in our company that we pay for the most. Uh, there's another company, Agora, that pays disgusting. They're like a $2 billion a year company. They sell info products and their number one position, the highest pay that they have is their copywriters. So and persuade buyers, you need to make sure that your product is constantly evolving. And that is the focal point of the next book I'm going to recommend, which is the Lean Startup. Now, the book talks about OK, the, the principles will be the same when it comes down to good product um, good product development, et cetera. But it's completely different uh, from, you know, a SaaS with VCs um, or even self-funded. So I actually don't agree with this bit. The importance of execution plus having a proper feedback loop. Because when you're able to execute fast and have proper feedback, you're going to be able to quickly pivot off the back of that and tap into the heart of the demand in any given market. Now, the next high leverage. OK, I, I, I do agree with that synopsis, to be fair. So. Uh, the, the overall book, the premise of it, if, if you didn't summarize it like that, then it's just a waste of time in regards to what you could be reading to fill that gap until you're on the you need step. in your arsenal as you build your way up from ten to hundred thousand dollars per month is negotiation. And we've all heard the saying that everything is a negotiation. And that's precisely why it's so important to be good at it. Now, the difference between knowing nothing and just reading a few books. on uh, I, I, f I feel like this is where we're going to butt heads. All right, let's let's uh, let's get this on the topic are massive. And that's why I never split the difference is going to give you the baseline you need in your path to $100,000 a month. It teaches you a method called I've never read, I've never read never split the difference tactical empathy, which you can use to build trust and rapport. And the result of this, the other person will mimic the same level of empathy for you, whether you're negotiating with clients, business partner, to be fair. Um, yes, but that's also in a heck of, if you read enough psychological books here you can it's it's one of those things that's like oh obviously it can be implemented elsewhere so yeah i don't think a whole book is needed to explain this though or potential investors the techniques in this book will help you make more money and it doesn't have to be complicated by the way simple things like mirroring what the person is doing in front of you will have a profound subconscious effect on them that can mean just repeating someone's last few words at the beginning of your sentence that can form the familiarity that you need to win negotiations but the key to success here is understanding people and that's where the next book comes Okay. 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 Literally uh, like understand. Yes. Understand that that's, that's psychological. So, um, okay. Fair. Now, let's keep going. listen, no matter where you make, let's keep going. Let's your money, you're going to have to deal with people. It doesn't matter if it's your employees or the police, you need to know how to deal with people because the difference between knowing how to navigate the social landscape and not is truly the difference between failure and success. You need to learn how to inspire others to fulfill your vision. Correct. That's where I fall short. That's why I don't, lead the umbrella company when I like the one that we have as you, I put in a CEO because I know what I'm good at. I'm very good at marketing, etc. That's my forte. I don't like working with people. I don't like hiring. I just need if I need this done, this needs to be done. I'm going to allocate my focus here because I don't want to, you know, uh, have to deal with an entire organization. It's not that I don't well, I, yeah, I really don't like working with people. I like to stay my own. And also people. how to not piss off the wrong people, because let me tell you something. Hmm. Um, yeah, no, I probably should read this book. And friends are far more useful than enemies. And that's why how to win friends and influence people. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. That should be in the 10 to 100K. Is perhaps the best book I've read when it comes to understanding human nature. Yes. Sure. That book on the 48 laws of power. Okay, okay. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I knew this was going to be mentioned. 48 laws of power. Be careful how you use that. When people apply certain laws, it's extremely manipulative. And if you don't understand the uh, the entire landscape of who you're dealing with, you will get absolutely fisted. I be, it, it is one of the books that I read every single year. I read two books consistently every single year. It's Principles by Ray Dalio. I actually order a hard copy. I get highlighters and then I also listen to it on Audible so I can highlight and because uh, you retain more when you're reading, listening and also highlighting so your brain retains and 48 Laws of Power. You're going to notice if you do read 48 Laws of Power, the examples that they give for each law as well. And some of them are really screwed up, but they work power are your complete guide to human relationships. The 48 laws of power teaches you laws of human nature. It's actually rooted in history. Now, I also want to give you a disclaimer and say that the 48 Haha, <laughs> me too. Uh, yeah. Pfft, yes. Laws of power can also be used for evil. So make sure you use it wisely. Now, once you've nailed down your marketing, your product and your relationships, there's one central point that remains. You need to be able to build a bulletproof business. And that means you need to understand the ins and outs 
of business. So when you're trying to get from $10,000 per month, you can be a bit rough around the edges, but that does not fly when you want to play in the big leagues. Now, sure, you could go out and spend a quarter million dollars on an MBA, or you could just read the personal MBA because this book distills everything you need to know about business and really 99% of the things you'd learn from doing an MBA in the first place. This book talks about everything from operations management and finance to leadership and accounting. Okay, the only the only quarrel I have with this is that, so he is a little bit more, all right, do not try to be any man, all right? Uh, because the, he's exceptionally talented. The problem is, is that trying to be a jack of all trades, you're gonna be literally, you're not gonna master any. So that's the big problem here is that, yes, you should know the foundation operational um, day to day, which again, you're going to have to do everything when you first start off, which is where you learn the majority of what you know. However, where you focus your attention and skill set is where you thrive. So also tax is really important. Let's see what he has to say. And I can promise you that if you read just this book, you'll know more than most business owners. Now, next, let's talk about going from $100,000 a month to a million dollars a month. This is the fun part. The books here should be oriented into who you are as a person, who you want to be, and more than anything, aligning what you're doing in life, which is it's very weird to say because people think, oh, you need to keep on learning more business stuff. You can only learn so much, but you're going to be the biggest barrier that you encounter will be yourself. So let's see. Now, something interesting happens when you go from 100K to a million dollars a month. You see, up until 100K per month, you focus on building skills. You want to learn the nitty gritty that allows you to excel. Essentially, there's a one to one relationship between your skills and your income, but that changes drastically when you want to get to a million dollars per month. Now, the knowledge you begin to seek is far more esoteric. Instead of looking to improve your sales, you're trying to understand understand the bigger picture that you operate in. And this is really where you start to look beyond your business. And that's when things get really exciting. And at $100,000 a month is also when investing becomes crucial in your wealth accumulation. Now, of course, you should have good investing habits from day one, but at $100,000 a month and above is where things get serious. And that is precisely why you need to read books like The Intelligent Investor to read. Yes, the yes, 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 uh -huh, yes. Ben Graham's Intelligent Investor. That's what Warren Buffett um, it calls, you know, the investing Bible, if you will. It is absolutely incredible. But here's the thing. The stuff that's talked about in the intelligent investor one of uh, such a great book but it is very very it's a hard read if you're like like i dropped out of school it's not like i'm super uh in tune with every single term i had to dedicate time to learn everything that was being said reread it like four or five six times certain paragraphs but yes long story short intelligent investor is going to teach you the basics of fundamental investing, if you will, you know, trying to look at a company, understanding this is why I know how to read and really learned how to read um, SEC reports, any filings from a company. That's why when I looked at Shopify, I knew exactly. Again, we're not going to get into Shopify too much, but I understood where the where the Achilles heel is there, and that it's propped up by just a bunch of influencers. It wouldn't have. It's not going to survive unless they branch out. But again, you you don't won't know what to look for even if you're looking for that without reading something like this let me see what Iman has to say needle when it comes to making you more money and this is not just some get rich quick scheme this is a tried and tested method since 1949. the book outlines everything you need to know about value investing value investing I found which is really the only way you should be investing to protect value yes so again he's going to mention moat so important I, I i mean i think he's going to mention moat i anybody who knows me understands i do not go into any business unless i have a moat and multiply your wealth with minimal risk. Now, later in the video, we're going to talk a little bit about JP Morgan. But uh, he doesn't go into uh, what a moat is. So think of a castle. A castle will have, you know, this water, this little pond of water, not even pond, but just a big gap with water in it and traps, you know, animals like alligators, because it makes it really hard for enemies to be able to infiltrate it. Basically, it has a barrier of defense, which is a moat before people are able to get in. Same thing. If you look at Warren Buffett's businesses, even when he bought Coca-Cola, the, uh, the thought process for him going and buying Coca-Cola was actually, if I just made Coca-Cola one penny more, because I think they were selling, what was it? Like 400 million cans a day. If I were to go ahead and buy Coca-Cola for X amount of money, if I just made it one penny more expensive, he didn't ask, will I make money? He asked, are people willing to pay one penny more? And that equated to his purchase on, you know, why he bought Coca-Cola. Now, again, Coca-Cola has its own formula. It's obviously not replicatable. Pepsi tastes a little bit different, but you take a look at his insurance companies. His insurance companies have a moat. What's the moat? Well, they have to get approved by the government. That's why insurance companies, there aren't, you know, that many. There's a, there's a bunch that are at the top, of course, you know, the big firms, but it's not like your average person just with a, a license can open up a firm and have a bunch of people. No, that's why they're brokers, etc. So that's a moat. And the only way you would have that is by acquisition, which somebody like Warren would go ahead and acquire. Then you take a look at Berkshire Hathaway stock. I think class A is last time I checked like two, $300,000 per share. There's one quote in particular that stands out from him. 
You see, JP Morgan famously once said that whilst millionaires don't use astrology, billionaires do. In the next book, Reality Trans- Bro, he just said this for the females. Surfing is less about astrology, but it is about using the world to your advantage. Reality Transurfing posts a theory that you can manage your reality. With Transurfing, you can make your goals happen. Now, of course, take this with- Now this is where, okay, this is where I draw a little bit of a line here. I agree with him, not because I think he's right, but because what works for you works for you. Meaning, I'm not about to sit here and read a book on not astrology. However, I'm not going to, if he were to come to me and talk to me about, you know, what he learned, I'm not going to turn him away. Like I just had dinner tonight with my great friend Tanner Chidester. And again, he's talking about, you know, how he hired a, a very, very, very expensive $200,000 a year coach in order to help him overcome certain mental roadblocks, etc. And he loves it. But again, this is a different level here, which I already understand where he was coming from. He just got it worded differently. He regurgitated it to me. And it's not that I didn't accept it. It's just that if it works for you, it works for you. So the grain of salt, but there is no doubt that there's with a grain of salt, much more to reality than meets the eye. And equally, it is clear that some people just seem to be able to bend reality to their will. And all I'm going to say to that point is that I know a lot of people look at me with that same thought. They look at me and they go, how have you done all of this? How have you accomplished all this? How have you been able to bend reality? do exactly what he wanted. And all I'm gonna say to that is I read Reality Transurfing when I was 14 years old for the first time. Since then, I must have reread it over a dozen times. I'm not gonna say anything more. Make of that what you will. Now, as important as it is to master your own reality, you also need to understand everyone else's because how people act ultimately shapes the economy. And that's what the book Misbehaving is all about. It's an introduction to behavioral economics. This is, I would put this as such a crucial book between the 10 and 100K still. Behavioral economics is one of those areas that simply doesn't matter when you people's behaviors are so, so indicative on what's going to happen in the market. Like if anybody has ever seen that article where it says strippers predict the next recession because again, uh, stock market brokers ha aren't going to the strip club as often. They're not making as much. It's interesting. It's, it's a behavioral pattern. So again, something like that, it's very interesting how it was angled that way, but this is kind of the same concept. So let's see what he has to say just want to get to $10,000 a month, but it matters a whole lot when you want to get to $100,000 and especially a million dollars a month or more. The book explains how investors can use behavioral economics to their advantage. And this is yet another great example of how one simple. And by the way, I did the, I use the same concept here for those that know when I posted on Instagram, the Terra Luna collapse, uh, I was able to make so much money uh, when it was delisted because I understood that people are panicking. And during panic is when massive opportunity presents. So while the herd was going one way, sell, 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 sell. And I saw the bunch of delisting as they were selling. I just kept dollar cost averaging my way and buying and buying and buying. Cause when it was relisted again, cause here's the thing. If you take a look and did your research, you would have seen that some of the biggest investors we're talking, uh, I think it was Binance labs. If it was Coinbase ventures, they were all invested into Terra Luna. So why would Binance be pulling a billion dollar plus investment? It's because of the simple fact that they want to mitigate their risks, but they also need to make sure that they're not losing billions of dollars. So they would relist it. And I understood that, but people were panicking. So I kept buying as it went down, down, I actually kept, I bought it at the lowest it could possibly go dollar cost averaging. I wrote it all the way back up. I made six figures over overnight uh, with like $5,000, I was able to go ahead and make like a hundred something thousand, um, which again, it was using human behavioral. I was just watching Twitter and understood that people were panicking. And I said, perfect. Just take a look at who's backing it. Why would the people backing it with billions of dollars say, you know what? Nope. We don't want anybody to go ahead and transact or buy this because we don't want to make money. We're cool with losing billions. It doesn't make sense. So while people were freaking out, same concept here. Look, can make you rich. Now let's go from a million dollars a month to $10 million a month and further. And this is where things get very, very interesting. Here's where things begin to really shift. To get to a million dollars a month and above, you need to analyze the world around you and you need to understand how things work. But in order to get to $10 million a month onwards, you need to start analyzing history in order to understand the future. Now I want to, I want to preface this $10 million a month consistently is extremely difficult, extremely difficult. If your current monthly recurring is 10,000, you are on a different playing field. Making 10 million in a month and then, you know, just making it out of sheer luck, great market, whatever it is. It is difficult, but it's not as impossible as consistently doing it. And it's at this level, you need to get into the most esoteric books, books that I've been talking about for years on my YouTube, books like The Preacher of Jekyll Island. This book unveils the secrets of the money magicians of the Federal Reserve, because it's only once you Okay. Yes. This is where we get, this is where we get really into, I wouldn't say conspiratorial, but it depends on how you want to view it. So let's keep going to understand how money actually works. That you can start to well, again, how money actually works. It's very cut and dry, very black and white. However, once we get into the political aspects of how money works, that's when things get 
um, that's when things get a little choppy. Really get wealthy. And I know that when I read this book, it completely opened my eyes to the real world, a world which most people are blind to. But once you understand the Federal Reserve, you also need to understand how the banking system works. And once you understand the Fed and the banking system, you can truly begin to realize your ultimate potential. And that's why these books... And by the way, the book that he's talking about right now, I have not read. So I'm not speaking on that book. It's just whenever I hear the Fed, etc., every book is very biased based on the author and the publisher, the author who writes it and the publisher who wants to go ahead and have the editors go in. So there's always a narrative in a book. That's why it's extremely, even textbooks for schools, it's extremely difficult to find one without a very one-sided viewpoint once it gets into the nitty gritty topics of like where the Federal Reserve was even created, who was there on the island, et cetera. So books are so important in making you rich. And that's why the next book I wanna talk about, which is The House of Morgan, it's actually a biography of the entire Morgan family and how they created the modern day banking system. I have said this time and time again, but history is doomed to repeat itself. History doesn't repeat itself. History rhymes with itself. World War II was not World War I, but it had the same lead up. World War III will have the same lead up as well. So that's something that to keep in the back of your mind. And the only way to truly be able to understand the future is by studying the past. And once you have a firm grasp- Correct, correct, correct. That's why I'm, I love Ray Dalio. Because Ray Dalio, that's, that's the premise. That's the focal point. History rhymes with itself. So what's happened in the past will happen again, just a little bit differently, but it'll still happen. On the past, you can even begin to start predicting the future. You see, history repeats itself, and you can actually use that to your advantage. Go ahead and think about all the different bubbles in history, everything from the gold rush in the 1850s to the rise of Bitcoin. I mean, what if you bought Bitcoin in 2010? Well, if these cycles of boom and bust have happened all throughout history, well, then they're bound to happen again. The key is that you need to be able to spot the trend before everyone else. And that is exactly what Devil Take the Hindmost teaches you. This book will walk you through the major cycles of boom and bust in recent history. And that means that after reading this, you're gonna be able to identify these trends. And that, my friend, is how you can multiply your wealth tenfold. Okay, so I know he has more to say. However, this video is getting pretty long here due to my commentary. So if you want to watch the rest, go sub to him or watch the other video that he described. It'll be in the description down below. If you can, just go ahead and slap a like and subscribe. If you enjoy this, then I will consider making a more reactionary, basically exceptionally easy and most hated content style on YouTube. So if you enjoy this, do let me know. If you don't enjoy it, do let me know. And I'll see you soon, hopefully, if this does well. Catch you guys.